As we prepare for Lord's Supper, let us pray. Father, I praise you for the day that you have made. Father, I pray, Lord, as we take time to reflect on the reality of the gospel, Lord, I pray for my friends that those that know you would be encouraged by the truth of the gospel, and for those that may not know you that are here today, Lord, that today would be the day of salvation, that they would repent and believe. Lord, our desire is that you would be given all the glory that is due you today. Father, thank you for your son that we can celebrate and participate in the communion today. And I pray this in his name. Amen. Uh, there's going to be men passing out Bibles. If you need a Bible, just raise your hand. We're going to be looking at the Word of God not only now in the communion service, but as the Word of God is preached today. So please raise your hand. As you take your Bible, will you please open it to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We are going to look at the main teaching passage that Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. And I am going to go slowly through it and kind of do some explanation as we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I will begin reading in verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup. It is the new covenant in my blood, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 24 and 25 teach that the, the bread and the juice are a shared reminder of Jesus. The bread represents a reminder of his body and the cup of juice is a reminder of the blood that was shed on the cross. Verse 25 states, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Uh, before I want to talk about the new covenant, the old covenant was when repeatedly they would sacrifice animals con continually for the payment of sin. But in the new covenant, Jesus died once for all. Jesus' death on the cross is the only means of satisfying God's wrath. The only means of satisfying the penalty of our sins. We take the bread and the juice as a reminder. For, for some of you, this might be a new reminder, and for others, it may be a reminder of what we are remembering a reminder of who he is. Jesus is God, came from heaven to earth. He lived a, a sinless life. He lived a perfect life to be the perfect payment for sin. It's a remembrance of what he accomplished. He, he accomplished eternal life for those who would believe. What scripture promises for those who repent and believe. Uh, we need to be focused on the great reward that Jesus accomplished when he died, paying, when he took on sin, paying the penalty that was due us. Verse 26 continues, for as often as you eat and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Lord's Supper, what, what we're doing right now is a proclamation. To participate in the Lord's Supper, here's what you're, here's what you're agreeing to. 
you're agreeing to who Jesus is. He is the Savior. He, he is the only Savior. He is the Son of the one true God. You're, you're proclaiming what he accomplished. He became sin. He accomplished paying the penalty completely. You're proclaiming that you're striving to persevere. Believer, that is to the day we die. We strive to persevere. You're proclaiming that as you participate in the Lord's Supper. You're proclaiming to persevere till we are with him face to face. Verse 27 continues, Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Verse 27 is a warning. It's a warning about taking these elements that you're going to receive in an unworthy manner. It would be unworthy for a non-believer to participate in the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> Excuse me. Be because it's what we're proclaiming. It it's unworthy to take it in a flippant attitude. That this is just no big deal. I really don't feel like looking at my life, examining my life, that, that's just not the response of a believer as he recognizes and thinks about the only solution to the greatest problem. And it's what was accomplished in the gospel. It's, it's unworthy to participate in the Lord's Supper in a ritual fashion. To think, well, you know, it's 10, 15 on a Sunday morning. This is what I do every morning. This is a time to be serious about your walk with the Lord in recognizing and agreeing with him and what he has accomplished in your life. And it's a time to be confessing known sin. If you see sin in your life, this is a time to evaluate. This is serious. This is not just something we do every week as a ritual. It's a reminder of the great gospel that we believe. Because of this warning from Scripture, if your testimony about yourself is that you do not agree with Scripture, do not believe Scripture, and trust that scripture, what Scripture says about Jesus Christ, please let the elements pass you by. Scripture teaches that for non-believers... In the truth of Christ, to partake is a, a sin against a holy Lord. Verse 28 continues, a man must examine himself, and in so doing, he is to eat and drink the cup. Let me give you a few things to consider. Do you come to the Lord's Supper serious about what we are called to do in this remembrance? We, we participate in the Lord's Supper for God's glory. This is the glory due him. As you look at your life, consider what Isaiah 43, 7 says, that you were created, believer, for God's glory. Are you living a life that would give glory to God? 2 Corinthians 5, 9 says, we, we live a life, we aim to please him. Evaluate yourself, am I living a life that's pleasing to him? And this is a time, if you recognize that you're missing the mark, that you confess, that you agree with God, that you are missing the mark, that you are sinning against the Lord. Verse 29, 30, 31, and 32, I will read together. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself if he does not judge the body rightly. For this reason, many among you are weak and weary, and a number have fallen asleep. But if we judge ourselves rightly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord so that we will not be condemned along with the world. 
Verses 29 through 32 again gives us a second warning about the person who participates that does not do this in an honoring manner, who does not participate in the Lord's Supper in an honoring manner. Do you believe what Scripture says? And are you living like the life that Scripture calls you to live in a way that's pleasing to him? This is a time for those who proclaim to be Christians. If your testimony is that you believe and you're trusting in Jesus for salvation, please participate in the Lord's Supper. And as I pointed out in verse 27, if, if you are here and you would not proclaim to be a Christian, we're glad that you're here. If you have questions about the gospel, we would want to answer your questions about the gospel. But this part of the service is not for you. It is reserved for those that are waiting for Jesus' return or the day that we are in glory face to face with the holy God. So the, the men are going to bring the elements after you have examined yourself. Enjoy communion on your own and I will come back and we will pray together. <clears throat>